The Hurricane Watchnet does exactly what it says. It's a group of hams who watch hurricanes. These hams assist with tracking impacts and helping forecasters. It's similar to Skywarn, but for hurricanes. Since Labor Day 1965, this net has helped track storms, mostly via HF communications. In 1980, ham radio operators were first embedded with the National Weather Service at the National Hurricane Center in Miami. They also support the Canadian Hurricane Center in Nova Scotia. The Hurricane Watch Net, or HWN team, is the first to tell you that many of their operators are not housed in these two locations. They are, quote, strategically dispersed across North America, throughout the Caribbean Sea, Central America, and the Northeast coast of South America, end quote. This provides a continuous path of communications from affected areas. The nets operate on 14.235 MHz during the day and 7.268 MHz at night. They activate whenever a storm is within 300 miles of a populated Atlantic region landmass. Here's an example. Not to pick on New Orleans, but let's say a storm is headed that way. Ahmed is safely embedded at his home station and can provide local storm surge updates. However, propagation between New Orleans and Miami is poor. A station like Max in Alabama can relay that information to WX4NHC in Miami. That keeps the weather service informed of that real-time information. Our friend Dick Seeley, NANIF, who does net control on the watch net, explains. When infrastructure goes down, ham radio is the only thing that works. And to have uh, net controls and relay stations all over the U.S., what I may not hear in Michigan, somebody else in Colorado will. So I have a list of about 200 people, uh, 250 people, volunteers for the 20 meter net that are associated with that actually will activate with us for Hurricane WatchNet. Let's listen to a Hurricane WatchNet activation. This report was captured on the evening of June 30th, 2024, during Hurricane Barrel. The net control op first gives the current active forecast. This transmission was from a Georgia station, K5WAN. Extremely dangerous Category 4 barrel is approaching the Windward Islands. Life-threatening winds and storm surge are expected there beginning early Monday morning. At 5 o'clock uh, p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, or 2100 UTC, the center of Hurricane Barrel is located near 11.1 north, longitude 56.5 west. The next intermediate advisory will be issued at 8 o'clock p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. The next complete advisory will be issued at 11 o'clock p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. This is Kilo 5 Whiskey Out for November for the Hurricane Watch Net out. We also hear for a series of stations to check in to allow the broad capability to listen for stations in the affected area. You're going to hear net control start by getting Dick checked in. NIF K5WAN, good evening Dick, how you copy on 40 meters? Good evening Dwight, how copy sir? Uh, good evening Wendell, you're a 5-9 uh, plus, this is Whiskey Foxtrot 4 Hotel. This is KO4BDF, Kilo off the 4, Victor Delta Foxtrot, South Lookout Mountain, Northeast Alabama. Uh, and you go to WA4KNI, I believe. This is Kilo 5 Whiskey out for November for the Hurricane Watch Net. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. My name is John, and we're in Hendersonville. With these check ins, the Hurricane Watch Net team now has receiving stations in five states that's Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, and North Carolina. Plus, the WX4 NHC station in Miami. That allows for many different HF propagation opportunities, which is helpful when they start calling for reporting stations. 
We are now calling for reporting stations within the affected area of Hurricane Barrel with weather data or damage reports for the National Hurricane Center. At this point in time, we're taking uh, check-ins uh, for those that are in the path of the storm, in the forecast path. So if you would like to check in with the Hurricane Watch Net, uh, please come now. Over. Luckily, at that time, no stations were being impacted by the storm. Yet, it would later go on and impact Mexico and the Houston, Texas area with high winds and flooding. Houston suffered extended power outages. Hopefully, reports from hams helped with the forecast during the long track of this powerful storm. We have more audio of the net activity for this storm. We'll make the complete audio available as a link in the text version of the course. How can you get involved in the Hurricane Watch Net? The two primary ways are to be a net control station or to provide reports from impacted areas. For net control opportunities, there's a training process. This allows for operators to understand the systems involved. For obvious reasons, that training only happens outside of hurricane season. To apply, visit the Hurricane Watch Net website. From there, click Net Control Information for more info. Any ham with HF capability and some weather knowledge can provide reports from the path of the storm. The net has some requested information it wants to receive in any report. Plan to include these items. Location, including city, state, and GPS coordinates. The observed information, like wind speed or flood heights. How you measured that information. And other information related to the report. You can find a form on the Net Procedures page of the Hurricane WatchNet website. So far, we understand how amateur radio tracks hurricanes as they come through. In the next part of this lesson, we'll see how hams bring communications back to an impacted area. If you like this video and want to learn more about operating ham radio, head on over to hamradioprep.com. Our Emergency Communications 101 course will teach you everything you need to know to become an effective amateur radio communicator with lessons that are easy to follow and understand. And if you need to get your ham radio license, we offer complete video classes for technician, general, and amateur extra. I'm Professor Jim, N4BFR. I'll see you in the class. Thank you.